All right. Hey, it's me, Neil Brennan. <laughs> this great. is the Blocks Podcast. I have oh, a Netflix special great. called Blocks where I have behind me uh, different figures, blocks, literally representing different areas of my life that make me feel like something's uh, weird or off or makes me feel alone or crazy well, or I'll sad. say exactly what you said. This is exactly what they, these are technically the areas in my life where I sometimes where I feel like something's wrong with me. Yes. Cuz I cuz you said cuz I didn't realize that's what your blocks were. Yeah. I thought they were just great bits that you were like, "Oh yeah, and I'll put this there and then that, that'll remind me to go to this yeah, one yeah. next." Which I thought was a great device. So when you said today to write down your blocks, yes. I was like, "Oh, you mean bits I'm working on cuz that's how my brain works." And then we sat in the gym this morning and I heard that line, you say that line, so I tried to write down you already said one of them that I kind of jumped on and I was like, "Duh." And then what was it? When a girl sees a guy that's attractive. Oh, no. All right. So you're, tell me your name again. Peter? Peter. He's, he's so, our steward. He's your steward? Well, he looks like Jon Snow. And John Which Snow, part of your face should I punch you in? <laughs> he was, he, <laughs> Jon Snow was a steward to the guy, the, the general of the, the, yeah, of the North. Okay. And so, and so I was watching this. I always had a problem saying assistant. It just doesn't seem I, weird. I'm, they're all awful. Yeah. It didn't seem right because he does so much more than just assist yes. me. Yes. And producer's so, a good one. Yeah, but I don't he's not that. So <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's not get ahead of ourselves. So, so this guy Peter is very good looking. So he came in and you said My daughter and her friends freaked out and they're like they call him Pee Wee and they're like, Pee Wee! Oh my god. They ran to the man cave. Leanne heard them scream from inside the house. Inside the house, she heard them scream from our where we did the podcast. Like one direction. Yeah, and yeah. And like Zane. Yeah. And I walked out and they're like, Pee Wee's here, Dad. And I was like, Yeah. He's here all the time. Like, it's not a big deal to me. And I said this. When you see a woman react to a genuinely good-looking man, you realize how much they're not reacting to you I, all the time. I have been hyper aware of that my entire life. Have you? What was the first time you realized that there was a level of man that you were never going to get to? Fifth grade, Nell Rudolph wouldn't couple skate with me. And I was like, what? we were couple skating right, and, like, and roller so, skates. And you, you, uh, you and said, I, will you? It was you? the and first said, time I did no. a, a temper tantrum, like where I went, that's it. Nell Rudolph, by the way, sounds like a civil rights icon. Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> she does sound black. Yeah. She's Jewish. She, well, all uh, right. she, but that was the first of many of me not knowing how to control people's reaction to me, not living up to what I wanted it to be. I always say, it's like when you get off stage, I want people to just carry me out on their shoulders. Yes. You want, like, All right, I did it. My, and with women, you so rarely get that. I never got it to the point where one of the things that I still is a block for me in life that I think about often, I was never the guy in high school, in college, after college, starting stand-up, moving out to L.A., that anyone said, you know who you got to set her up with? Bert. It's so funny. They'd be like, their hot friend would come in from fucking Edmonton, and they'd all be like... And they'd be like, don't be weird. Bert, can you not be 100% <laughs> you? Can you... I mean, I... I I had a, it got to a point where I it started happening to dudes where like my personality was so overwhelming at times that they like dudes would be like I I need a break from you Ugh. and so like I girls never ever ever said you gotta meet Bert and I don't know if this is in the same block but uh, this is gonna come out wrong I have an aversion to whores I know you're not supposed to whore shame but I have an aversion whores to meaning like slutty women. Women who sleep with a lot of men, and I know you're allowed to now, but I don't do that, so I expect you not to do that. That's not who I want to be with. Who, a girl who treats her body very publicly, I'm not that person. I'm very, I, f I fall in love. Why? Do you not? Oh, okay, go ahead. I fall in love. I went to bars in quickly. college. Quickly. Very quickly. Like, before you slept with Leanne, your, your lovely wife, Leanne? Hold for applause, Leanne, of course. If Leanne was here, she'd say the exact same thing. I wouldn't go out on a date with her because I thought she was a whore. Cause, because I got, so Sex in the City really fucked me up. It made me believe every woman who was over 35 was just wanted to fuck, get raw dogged, fuck as many guys as possible. I need to have as many sexual experiences as possible. And so I was like, dude, I'm Why out. raw, where'd raw, who, I have no were idea. they raw dogging? I, I, were, was that like 
we, you, they'd be at brunch going like, you raw dog, right? Clink. I, I just assumed no one wore condoms. They all just. Right. They didn't like, make no a big, one gave a they fuck about a their show. bodies. They didn't yeah. do a cutaway of a condom. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No one gave a fuck about their bodies. No one gave a fuck about their future partner. No one gave a fuck about their fucking kids. Like <laughs> everyone just wanted to fucking so raw free dog. For all. It was a. And, and yeah. then you moved to New York and that's all like girls were just fucking. And I'm and I look, I'm not a prude. I wanted to share more than just sex with people. There are two women that can listen to this, maybe two women that can listen to this and go, hold on, we hooked up uh, after one night, and he yeah. had sex with me, but they're two. I can actually call them on the fucking phone. In your life, two. In my life, in my life, two. How many women have you slept with in your life? Six. Six. It's so, crazy, it's crazy. People think that I'm People think that I'm making it up because they because I was the party animal. And do you feel like that's the right amount, or do you no, feel like no, 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 it should have been more? Well, no, no, or I, it I been, actually think it's two over. <laughs> I actually I had that same thought. <laughs> like I feel like six is too many. Yeah, like you're like a, you're ashamed of yeah. Well, because there was a there was a time where I was like, did you grow up Catholic? Yeah. Okay. Oh, All right. That big, is. Yeah. I mean, there was a period when I was in comic in New York, and like dudes were trying to hook up after the shows. Yeah. If you saw their shows, they'd meet you down at the bag the bag it in and. They kind of like not corner them, but like be like, "Yo, that table, I'm I'm on that." Yeah. And then I'd always be like, "Another one of my box competition. You can write it down." Um, I, one of your blocks is competition. Competition. You're overly competitive. No, no, no. Underly. I am genetically designed to be extremely competitive. Okay. I'm very competitive, but I I know that that's not a healthy part of my personality. Right. So I shut it down. So if a guy goes, I call that chick, I find that such a fucked up thing to say to another guy going no, right. hold on let her decide Call, yeah yeah let her decide yeah and he's like don't step on me bro yeah and you're like and there are guys there are guys in our business that are my age that are stand-up comedians that would bring that energy to every night after a show when i just wanted to ha hang out and party they'd yeah. be like hey uh the one by the bar that's mine and you'd be like oh, yeah then you're like Sh I, if i acknowledge her i'm an asshole and i was yeah. like and i was and i was never more successful than anyone everyone was more successful than me so you want to move forward in comedy. You're like, ah, oh, sure thing, man. This yeah. is all yours. And then I was just like, I'll go home alone. I don't give a fuck. Like, I actually fought with it because I was like, what the fuck is wrong with me? I was going into bars, including in college, like, looking to fall in love. Like, like looking to, like, I hope someone connects with me. It's like the opposite of most guys. I don't want to say all guys, but almost every guy I've ever met. I didn't realize you didn't have to, like, date a woman if you slept with her until i was like in my 30s i thought if you sleep with her she's your girlfriend because that's a catholic yeah. thing where you're just yeah. like well no this is, she's my girlfriend i'm not gonna defame her yeah uh, the only out of uh, the two i think two one night stands i had i said i love you to one of them in the middle of it <laughs> the first time i had sex with leanne this is how did you I, <laughs> did, why did you say I that you. i just said i love you because that's what i did when i had sex with people i said i love you it's one of the things my go-to things was it's just like kissing her on the neck i love you so much like <laughs> just, i just love you and then, uh, you're like you're like lenny from of mice and men I'm, dude I, you have no fucking idea do you crush puppies when you meet them <laughs> do you say i love them and then you next thing you know they're like jay won't tom he won't the puppy won't move. No, but when I saw that movie in high school, I thought I wouldn't mind going out like that. <laughs> Tell me I can feed the rabbits, George. Can I feed the rabbits? Tell me what it's like. Gonna, like it's gonna like what it's gonna be like. It's gonna be. Plain. I think that's how people want two bears to end. <laughs> Tom, okay. by if the way, honest. we did the dance video, mm -hmm. and the, you know I did the original dance video, and then Tom saw it and 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 then created his dance video, and he spent. Like forty two thousand mm dollars -hmm. on his. I spent twelve hundred dollars on mine. Right. My dancing stood out. His was needed to be covered with a bunch of special effects and yeah, background. Yeah. Well, well I, everybody I, knows that. I yeah. go solo. He needs to put poor, he throws money at it. I just bring talent. Mm -hmm. So I watched it and I didn't understand him stabbing me. And like that's a one of my other blocks. Write it down. Sensitivity. I really you can see it when you watch me. I just get confused. That's his sense of humor, is like it ends in murder yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Or, uh, someone dies. Yeah. yeah. And I did not get it. And I was like, and he was like, right? And he, you could see the look on his face, like wanting approval, like, and then I, stabbed I stabbed you to death. And yeah. I was like, why did you do that? And I was like, is this like a joke I don't get? Like, and I showed it to my daughters. My daughters were loving it. They were loving it. And then when he stabbed me, they're like, why would he do that? And I went, so wait, I'm not the weird okay. one, right? Like, you didn't get that either, right? But everyone loved it. I mean, everyone loved that he stabbed me 
and I fell and I died. Like they loved it. I love that you said I love. It's a similar thing of like it's just a Catholic thing. Yeah. Like guys we went to high school with. One of them got a girl pregnant early, and it was like just get an abortion, but he'd already sinned one, like you know what i mean like well i've all, no i'm not gonna oh, i would never we get don't, an abortion yeah i get that I even when never, you were 18 you would never have. never i would never get an abortion i literally i i don't know i guess i'm pro-choice because i want people to live their own lives i don't want to make right. decisions for them leanne the other day we were in the hot tub right george is in college isla's out with her friends and leanne never does this she gets naked and gets in the hot tub she turns the hot tub on she makes two signature cocktails and gets naked and gets in the hot tub and brings me a signature cocktail. And I'm like, I go, what's up with this? And she's like, I don't know. This is what our life is, can be like. I know you're bummed about the girls leaving, but this is what our life can be like. So we get in the hot but tub. But are you trying to fuck or not? That, that's all that's on my mind. Yeah. So I get in the hot tub. I said. Uh, you said I love you because she was naked? No, no. Immediately all I wanted to do. I told, I told her, I said, oh, I'm, my thing right now, my thing right now is I'm trying to, I am trying to appreciate cuddling in life so life you know what's me, great about you as a what? guest on and and part of i think your appeal on two bears is you're fucking endlessly weird i am very it's, i am very it's very weird endless it's fucking endless i only want to talk about the stuff that i that i think can be interesting but the thing I, stuff i think is interesting is always a little off center to everyone else where they're like you do that and and then i don't mind going yeah yeah i shower in pools so so i'm working on cuddling right now so like sunsets, when I was a kid, smells were a big thing to me. Like a, a smell. When I got went to Florida State, I could be at that city and I would wake up and the smell of the city was so different than Tampa. That was my dopamine. Just the smell of Tallahassee. The changing of seasons. We didn't get any season change in Tampa. But in Tallahassee, you got an actual season change. The The color of the dirt is different in Tallahassee than it is in Tampa. And they have hills in Tallahassee. So many things would fire my dopamine that I... I didn't really drink until I went to Russia. In all honesty, I never really drank. I didn't need to. I really enjoyed, I had a dog. Having a dog was a big dopamine change, like fire up. I got an iguana, like these little things in life would 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 fire me up. And then I, now I'm at a place in life where, and I realized I lost sight of the cuddle in life. I just want to fuck. So like I can see a sunset. You were whereas, fucking life. Yeah, I was fucking. You weren't yeah. cuddling life. Uh, yeah. You just wanted to fuck, fuck it. I got to the place now where I can't even cuddle with life. Like, I can catch a change in weather, and I go, that's nice. We need to open a bottle of wine. And I just want the penetration of it. I just want, let's open a bottle of wine. Let's hide a joint. Let's, uh, oh, my God, this is great. Do you feel how cool it's getting? It's, it was windy the other night, really windy. And I was like, I was like, I need a cigar. Like, and I go, oh, I need to slow things down and just get back to the cuddle of when I was a kid when I go. So how long do you take to appreciate the wind? Leanne is the one that made me realize this. And so when we got in that hot tub, I didn't touch her for i wanted to talk to her and just her to relax in the hot tub and us to enjoy the hot tub and have a conversation and talk and connect i and would like to say drink. for the record because we're in public and people are hearing this, yeah to it this is for men you literally can never give a woman too much foreplay because i was gonna say she and leanne must have been like let's fuck but when you literally can never there's not a thing as too much foreplay for women. It, you Almost, are so fucking right. Like an hour isn't too much. Like an we hour had, 20, they'll be like, all right, let's do it. But like- We talked, we talked and we had a great conversation and she said to me, she was, and this goes back to the abortion thing. She said, uh, hey, I haven't got my period. And I was like, oh. How was, old are you? Is she? I'm 50, she's 52. And I was like, I was like, and no. Like, yeah, it's called menopause. I didn't know that. It is menopause. <laughs> I went from thinking I was going to have a baby to having an old lady. And I was Let's like, get some cigars. I was like, motherfucker. She goes, no, I'm never getting it again. And I was like, oh. Aww. I was like, I thought I was having a kid. And like put the, put the uh, book of baby names away. Like, forget it. Never mind. I don't want a kid anyway. Oh, I guess I'm just going to. Oh, lady. It just doesn't <laughs> She hasn't had a period in a while, Bert. No, she hadn't had a period. No, she, no, she got it again. She's getting it again still. Well, yeah, because, because she's all got off her birth control. And so like, uh. You're so crazy, birth. You 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 could understand this, but birth control is, is putting a the, stimulant in their bo body. She's been on birth control since she was like 14, 15. What women do for reproductive for period? It's I always there's no bigger misogynist than God. Yeah, the biggest misogynist of all time, bigger than dice. <laughs> What's really crazy is 
I never, I, I would never wear a condom. When we first started dating, and I realized this, uh, this is who I'm going to marry. Also, perfect podcast guest and host. Ne you don't even know what a boundary is. You shouldn't tell me that you never wore a condom with Leanne. I, <laughs> you have no boundaries, and it's absolutely true. It makes you the boundaries. perfect modern uh, podcast person. And it rears its head when your kids start getting Googleable. And yeah, like, how like, is that? Ooh, Dad, what the fuck? They go yeah, but it's getting, at the end of the day, you slept with six women. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. they, there's so many, like, but ne never a condom. Never but a that's condom. another, like, weird Catholic thing where, like, there's a Catholic thing with condoms where it's like, well, I'm already sinning, so I might as well not give myself any protection yeah. from this. I'm already, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I never, I wore condoms my whole life. My third girlfriend was on the pill, got on the pill, and I didn't have to wear condoms with her. But still, at the end of every month, I was like, what if she's pregnant? I've always sweated at the end of the month to find out if she was going to get, they were going to get their period. I was like, there should be an app that registers when a woman gets her period so you know that she got her period. Yeah, like, don't do it. I need the period tracker. You yeah, don't yeah, need yeah, it. Yeah, you, she doesn't need like, it. You know what's happening. They would just get their periods and not tell you and just be like, yeah. Well, the best is when they're late and then you're just, like, holding your breath and then a week later they'll be like, oh, yeah, I got it. You're like, yo. Yeah. You gotta tell me. Day <laughs> when of. When it's, like, minute With spotting. of. spotting. I want to know during minute spotting. Of. Yeah. I'm begging you. This is very oh. important to me. Oh, yeah, by the way, <laughs> that entire life-altering thing we talked about, yeah, it's not going to happen. <laughs> you know, you giving up. I When I was when I performed in Tallahassee, I walked uh, past Reynolds Hall, and I, I we parked. You have to just text me your blocks, because we're never, I yeah, know oh, from, yeah. from, from, from doing the podcast, is it's like your level of, of ADD is death. Is, uh, death. Text it to me. When you care about what people think, uh, it's it's <laughs> it's perfect. What's the thing when you? What's the word? I was trying to guess. What's the word when you can care about what people think about you? Insecurity. That's it. I'm insecure. <laughs> yeah, put that down. Okay. I can't. I don't know how to cut and paste. I can't cut and paste. No. Yeah, I figured. Yeah, buddy, I was afraid of that. Copy. Texting to you. Oh shit! I texted him to Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want to get a guy? Like, what? You want to talk about a guy? He's like, wait, it's a fucking. Security. What do you care about God what people think about you? I'm not fuck fucking Bert. Fucking, do you own a kettlebell? What the <laughs> fuck? You worried about falling in love? Just take testosterone. So you're cuddling life, and yeah. you spent the last couple. I'm interested in cuddling life. I'm trying to get back to the little things. Okay, so we're in the hot tub. Did you make Leanne feel comfortable? And you gave her verbal and emotional foreplay. Yes. And for how long? Long enough that we were ready to get out of the hot tub. And then she got on top of me and we started having sex. And then in the hot tub, which never works, but it's we started fooling around. Literally never worked once. Yeah. No. Yeah. You got to try it. Yeah. And Look, then you swab you the deck. So all the hard work you put in is fucking cleaned out. So you got to fucking bring her back. Swab the well, I don't even know what that means. Anyway. So. Well, you flush it. You flush it with if you're going, if you're having sex in a hot tub, all the fucking work you put in to to lubricate the situation gets oh, it flooded all gets, out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we go back into the bedroom, and we had uh, fantastic sex. I mean, fantastic sex. How many times did you tell you loved her? Oh, every time. I said, but I can I tell you what I said? Several say? times. What I say to Le no. What I say to Leanne now is. I have a weird feeling that's. I'm gonna sound like a fucking lunatic. It's fucking that ship has sailed. <laughs> You're the craziest. Per I mean, I have a thing with Leanne. The best part of sex with me and her is at the end where you like lay on top of each other when she lays on top of me, and then you sit there, and I always go, I can't believe I still love you. Like I can't believe. Yeah, that this is still good. Like, I can't believe you're. I, I really think it's cool. That's, that's how. By the way, that's what a relationship should be. It's, it should you be. should feel like I. This is a miracle that this yeah. still works. I said to her today. I said I don't know if Peter caught on to this because she came into the the gym during. You let Peter watch you guys fuck, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's your fucking. Yeah. Com what is he? Your commander? My, st my steward. He's your steward. Yeah, yeah. So we went. I woke. I, she's. If you get to produce a level, you get to fuck her. 
Yeah. By just the way, FYI. Fucking throw the animal the briar way. patch. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's not the only one that say, gets excited say when the word. comes over. Yeah. So she has not been wearing a bra in the mornings. But if Peter comes over, she puts on a bra. And when she doesn't wear a bra, that's like my favorite thing in the fucking world. It's my favorite thing in the... It is, is it my, like a dirty t-shirt or it's like... No, it's just whatever the fuck. It's some stupid shirt that I'm no gynecologist, but I can see a dirty cunt when I see one or whatever. Whatever. Well, I don't know what that... Maybe that... I don't know if that's the shirt, but... Like it's just some silly shirt. That was probably the wrong shirt. That's not the shirt. It's whatever. It says Snoopy on it or something. And so it says picture Snoopy, dirty cunt underneath yeah. it. But it's like it's my favorite thing. And so I will go up behind her and cuddle her if she's doing dishes or like on the computer or something. And I always say to her, "You have no idea. Like no one gets this. That someone's that in love with you. No one gets that. Like I don't have it. I don't think Leanne just sees me in a pair of silk." Uh, jogging shorts and just grabs my well, cock like speaks I'm to so lucky that, to have this that thing of like you have in order to even make an impact on women you have to look like Peter otherwise yeah. you have to like work and earn it and do shit and yeah. fucking dance and fucking magic trick, all this I had to soft shoe the, my whole fucking life I had to you know I actually have I had theories on this about I got into a fight with uh, uh, Stacy Dash one, one time sure and uh, we were it was at spin class uh, Bob from The Biggest Loser was the teacher. Random as fuck, right? So it crunch. This is back in the day. I put my stuff on the spin bike, and then I went to go do abs, and then I went back, and uh, and my stuff was off the spin bike, on the ground, over in front of another spin bike. And Stacy's Dash was on my spin bike. Back in the day, Crunch only had like 15 spin bikes out of the out of the 50 they had that were like good still good high end i like to just invite the audience right now to make at the end of this make a super cut of the random shit bert has said during this podcast it's astonishing and how my face gets redder as i drink no but it's great but also how you act like it's totally normal like no yeah i got in a fight with stacy so bob from the biggest losers of course so bob's bob's a very inspirational dude for and for real like the guy's Guy legit knows how to connect with people. There's a few people that do that, but uh, he's a le- he was a legit great coach, very great coach. So I go to Stacey Dash. I go, hey, my stuff was on that bike, and she's Stacey Dash has never had to use her words to to do to get anything, mm-hmm. you know, like other than can I have a coffee, please? And then everyone was like, sure, right. yeah, what size? What yeah. size? You're, you're gorgeous. So I said that was my spin bike. She goes, no, it's mine. And I realized in that instant. I was dealing with someone that doesn't talk, that doesn't use words. Well, she doesn't have to persuade anybody to do anything. Right. Her it's thing like, is. Yeah. When I'm, women I'm, say, I'm going to seduce him, you're just going to make yourself available. Yeah. There's no seduction. You just, a woman seducing you is standing in your eye line. <laughs> it's, it's like when girls go like, let's go to his work. When they like, like your, your dog yeah. is probably at the age where they, if they think a guy's cute, they just go to his job. Because yeah. that's all they have to do. Yeah. That's Whereas it. We got to like do shit. I ran circles around her intellectually in a conversation about spin bikes. And she just started crying because she had never used her words before. And she just, I watched it and I went, of, of course. And by the way, I was single at the time and I was super misogynistic. And, and I was like, of course, that's what you do. Of course, you don't have words. You can't. You've never taught. You never taught to use words. You're gonna cry. And then Bob was like, "Yo, did you were you said that? Yeah." And Bob wow. goes, "Let it go." And I went, "No, Bob, no." She took my spin bike. And this and he is goes, in the middle of a spin class, by the way. There's no, still no, no, a spin no, no. class happening. People everyone's, like, everyone's clipping in. Everyone's warming up. Everyone's hitting the watching. hill, and you're going like, and another thing, Stacy Dash. But here's the interesting thing: every one of these people in this group knew also. There's only 15 good spin bikes. Everyone knew the currency I was dealing in was spin bikes. Mm -hmm. And that's what they dealt in every day. That's why they showed up early. We're talking to early, early people. And Bob only rode a one spin bike, the one at the front of the class. That's going to be the best spin bike there is, of course, right? Yeah. So I'm like, no, Bob. She took my spin bike. And you're watching people going, hey, man, it's fucked up. You don't. He he called that bike because that's how everyone operated. And Bob was like. You get to pick the battles you want to fight. I think this isn't the one. And and in a weird way, I kind of heard it like Bob had a great way of like a great way of saying things that I understood. One time I was about to go to Thanksgiving and he was like, he was like, Do you we're in the we're in this? He goes, Everyone out of the saddle. That means like stand up a pedal. He goes, Do you want to go home 
this Thanksgiving and have everyone that you wanted to fuck want to fuck you. And I was like, in my head, I'm like, that's all I've ever wanted. And he was like, then stay out of that saddle. And I'm like, okay, I'll stay out of the saddle. Stay out of the saddle. Do you want to walk into the bar that you grew up going to and have everyone at college see you and go, God damn, you look good. I slept on that guy. Then stay out of the saddle. He spoke so sincerely to my heart that I stayed out of that saddle and I went home that Thanksgiving and the hottest fucking chick two years older than me came up and goes, you look good. I was like, motherfucking Bob. Bob. Fucking Bob. <laughs> fucking Bob. And did you, did you, is she one of the six? I hooked up with her. I kissed did you really? her. I, no, I didn't have sex with her. I kissed her. I kissed her. I was a big kisser. Yeah, because I've never heard someone refer to it as hooking up, kissing. Yeah, that's, no, that's, oh, that's, that is that is. How many women up. have you hooked up with? Kissing. Oh, lots. Tons. Kissing? Like 40? Oh, no, no. Not, not that many. <laughs> <laughs> 12. <laughs> probably. I probably kissed. I, mean, I, don't kiss, I don't kiss you unless I'm going to fuck you, probably. Like, or unless I intend to fuck you, if I have, I have hopes of fucking you. Right. 12. I, I, would, I would argue... Oh, wow, that's a great question. Okay, so high school. I could probably name them. Great. Go. Uh, a, I'm going to do first initials. A, J. Oh, do you, I don't care about first initials. J. No, I'm doing it for me. Oh. J. There's a lot of Jennies in there. 80s in Philly? 80s and 90s in Philly? No, You're in gonna Tampa. Catch in Tampa, sorry. Um, I'm going to say 11. Dude, I bet I'm not out of 20. Women that you made out with, made out with, yeah. I bet I'm not. Oh uh, well, here's a question. So, how long that night did you and he, uh, you and Leanne have sex? How long did you last? Uh, not very. How long is not very? Uh, <laughs> I, have, uh I, I have jokes about them, but they're all my special. <laughs> um, uh, very quick, very quick. All like right, it, I'm it just happens, wondering what happens what, immediately. How, what the other, how she, the other. All she has to do is a couple things. God, your shoulders look big. And then I'm like, what did you say? And then if she, uh, she touches. Literally, she has a script. If she says, your shoulders look big, I immediately like, I'm like, in my eyes. Uh. And if she touches my nipple, it happens immediately to the point where I go, don't do that to me. Like you're, now I know that you're just like, let's wrap it up. Boom. And just touches my nipple. And I'm like. Aah. This is fantastic. Yeah. All right, so one of your blocks was, I think we, I mean, we, it's a roundabout way, but I'm trying to keep us on track. What's that, sensitivity? Yeah, well, the sense- well, I'm so sensitive, Segura's actually had, we actually had a fight about it tonight. Well, the first block was that you don't like when girls like other men, like when you see yeah. how, like Peter, you see, like how a woman reacts to a real, and you, guys like you and I got to earn it. We'll make that the first block. Yeah. Second block, we want to go sensitivity. Oh. I had a conversation with Tom. On the phone tonight, on driving here, going, I feel like he knows me so well. He knows how sensitive I am. I get I get my feelings hurt very easily. And I just have to pretend I it doesn't happen and then yeah. deal with it. Cause that's no one wants a thin skin skin comedian, but like I'm very sensitive. And so I'm more sensitive that I hurt your feelings than I am about you hurting mine. Cause I I don't listen a lot. So if people people say things to me all the time, I just go right past me. But, like, with Tom specifically, he's very direct, and he didn't have a problem with confrontation, so he didn't have a problem saying, dot, 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 dot. And I was pulling on the 101. Peter was in the car, and I was like, I was like, I got to be honest with you. This is how I'm feeling right now. I feel like this is happening right now. And he was like, buddy, that's not – and it's, I can hear the exhaustion in his voice. He's like, that's not what's happening. That's not what's happening. You said that we were going to do this. You never replied to anyone's texts, and now we're trying to schedule it. And I was like, I know, but, you know – Here's how I feel. Because that's a big partnership. What's the difference between your partnership with him versus Leanne? Oh, my God. This is a good example. Tom and I hate the same people. Leanne and I hate different people. So, like, I can't trash talk anyone with Leanne because she and I dislike different people. Tom and I dislike the exact same people. So we can trash talk people. And sometimes it's, it, like... That's the interesting part. So, like, with Leanne, I'll have to say, hey, I'm going to talk to you about, like, so we, we should going to say a real fucking name here. But, like, I'm going to talk to you about Ari. Right. Okay, that's a real name. Um, 
I'm upset with Ari about something. But right. I, I need you to do not attack him right now because then I'm going to start defending Ari. Yeah. So please just let me shit on what Ari just did to me or whatever. And it's not the drugging thing, but it's like, let me talk to you about what Ari did. And then just don't defend him, but don't just listen. Yeah. And then inevitably, Lan will be like, fuck Ari. And I'm like, no. now I got to well, That's him. an interesting thing that I've learned, which is you can't shit talk certain people. Like, if you have, if you're working with people, yeah. you can't shit talk other people you're working with. Uh uh-uh, uh, no. Because then they feel like they can shit talk them or they like. Barry Katz, you. Barry Katz is a perfect example. Barry Katz is a is, is a former ma- is a manager who managed you at one managed point. Managed me. Managed Pro- Dave. Probably managed you, right? No, he managed Dave. Yeah, um, Barry actually said I was positive you weren't going to make it. <laughs> so pretty good. <laughs> Barry Katz. When I worked with Barry Katz, he was a very frustrating manager. At the time, Barry had a lot of clients, and you would feel like you weren't being paid attention to. <laughs> How great would it be right now if Barry heard this and he was like, "What?" I'm sure he. I'm sure he's he like, "Wait, what?" Someone will tell him to people listen. Thought, and listen. People thought that they heard you on Bert's podcast, like, man. I get a text from him. I love Barry. I love Barry. He gave me some of the best advice I ever had in my career. But there was obviously I'm not with him, so there were negatives. And so I would say to Leanne, I'd, I'd go like, "Hey, I'm 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 so fucking pissed at Barry." And then she would just go, "Yeah, fuck him." And I'd be like, "Hold on, don't do that." Yeah, because I'm I started it. Let me shit on him. I wouldn't mind you defending him a little bit so that I could you could talk me out of it. Right. She's like, yeah, he doesn't pay attention to you at all. Fuck him. He only got one pony, boy. It's Dane Cook. He's got one pony. And then I'd be like, uh, this isn't helping. This isn't why I started the conversation. <laughs> and so then you're sitting, at, I, I can tell you where this conversation happened, on the corner of San Vicente and La Cienega. And I'm just sitting in the fucking car going, stop. Like, I'm trying to shit on Barry right now. Let right. me shit on him. Well, usually I feel like men do that to women, where we'll like it's like fixing the problem. Oh yeah. Where, well, Leanne's like the man in our relationship. I think I'm getting that she buys the houses, she spends the money. I have no idea how much money we have. I, we talked about this. Yeah. I think I have no idea how much money we have. I have no idea uh, about anything. If she dies, I don't have the logins to our bank codes, and I don't couldn't even get money. Putin set Russia up like that. <laughs> Apparently he like has no one knows how to no one he has all the combos. That's fucking hilarious. Uh, so you're sensitive, but you like getting roasted. You like no, no 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 no. Oh, you don't. So I don't I don't mind it if if I know you love me. Right. My thing is like if you're gonna sh- like the the joke I have in the special about the party where Chris yeah. fucking hits me with a clean shot. Chris Rock hits me with a clean yeah. shot to the kidneys. And I literally, and then I come back, I have a clean shot at him, and then I say, like, by the way, great joke. Yeah. Like, it's, in some ways, it's a privilege. One of the fun parts about being a comedian is the funniest people on earth know you. Yeah. And can just text you some uh, eviscerating shit. And it's like, oh, this is great. It's better than just, like, a sloppy bad joke about me. Sometimes the thing that hurts my feelings is the guy that, doesn't know me or something yeah, yeah. And, no and that, like, that's like, always the one where it's like wait i don't the guy this is not your fight like i don't I, I don't even know you those things will hurt my feelings i'll read things weird that'll hurt my feelings like i'll read i'll misread what someone yeah. says yeah I, that happens or the tone of it and i'll go whoa what's interesting is hurts your feelings then you reread it you see what they meant yeah your feelings are still a little hurt yeah. It's like a human weird thing where like you can't you get dented and the dent just doesn't repair itself. Yeah. What have you done to try to overcome it? It's an interesting question. Number one, I tried to regress and allow things, not give power to things that would hurt my feelings. Okay. So like I would I wouldn't put power in a lot of people's opinions if they were positive to me. So why would I put power in th- yeah. to them if they're negative to me? Like, uh, I, I do it on the bus. Like, I'll go, I'll post a video and I'll go, hey, no one reads comments. Like, no one reads comments. I don't want to know comments. Yep. Like, I don't need to know comments. I, I, I look at uh, I look at views and likes. Or uh, views and really comments. I look at the number of comments. Okay. Like, if there's 12,000, uh, 1,200 comments, I go, okay, that, that people are, they're either they're fighting in there or whatever, but it's not worth it to me. If I get over a million views on a video, I'm like, it's a good video on Instagram. Yeah. So 
that's all I look at is the views. I click the insights and I took a look at the views and the number of comments. Uh, every now and then I'll jump on to the first five because they're always going to be positive and I'll like a couple. But um, but I was like, I, I shouldn't allow, because I don't really care about that person's view of the video or, oh, you're promoting too much or or right. some of those things. I go, yeah, the only person that's saying that is a guy that's never come to my show. This video was not meant for you ever. Yeah, it's also, they don't understand. Like, you'll promote your show in Tallahassee 10 times, yeah. do the show, and then... The day after, someone will say, when are you coming to Tallahassee? And it's like, yeah, dickhead, I posted you. about it endlessly. So when I did Red Rocks the first time, I it was it a was bigger venue than I ever thought I could do. It was 10,000 seats. I was posted to Jim Jeffries. He backed out at the last minute. He was having a baby. And so they were like, hey, we saw the venue open. Do you want to do it by yourself or someone else? And I was like, well, I'll, just, I'll just do it by myself. And they're like, it's a big venue. My agents were like, I think you can sell it, but you, it's going to take some work. And I worked very hard on selling that venue, I, I, I did a lot of promotion. And a lot of comics hit me up privately and they're like, dude, another fucking promo for Red Rocks? And you're like, I don't really give a, like in my head I was like, I don't give a fuck about, I definitely don't give a fuck about what you think about how much I'm promoting. Cause I know what tickets you sell and it's not 10,000. So yeah. your note is obsolete to me. Like I, that, that's fucking, that flew, I, I'm definitely not listening to you. Like I'm, the one leading this chart. And then all of a sudden it was like this shift of like, so wait, if they're noticing I'm posting a lot, then maybe that's showing up on everyone's radar that to someone like Red Rocks, like I thought about Wilco. I love Wilco. If you told me Wilco was coming to the Wiltern and I saw it, I'd be like, oh, fuck yeah, I gotta get tickets. But I'll forget and then pretty you forget. quickly. And then and it you becomes, literally have to, even people want to see you, you yeah, have to tell them for it. The time. next time I see it, I go, oh shit. I forgot they were coming. Yeah, I gotta yeah, get tickets. I gotta, yeah, yeah, yeah. Never, yeah. as a fan of Wilco, will I ever go like, dude, enough. That energy is not a Wilco fan. That's a guy wanting to hate shit. Yeah. And so I went, oh, you're dead to me. I almost wish I could block you from my comments and following me because your energy is shitty. It's bad energy, yeah. And when I went to do, I did Wilco, I sold out. The first time I did Wilco, I sold it out. Red Rocks, you mean? Red, or, yep. First time I did Red Rocks, I sold it out clean sold out second time clean but sold out the first time clean almost like clean week, meaning week like of, like sold like out before week, yeah no tickets available yeah. uh week of probably probably how maybe, long were they on sale uh a while a while <laughs> that's all right <laughs> like seven months like i'm guessing i put them on Good. sale in serbia and probably sold out sold out in f probably right before like two weeks before the show i'm guessing week of two weeks right around that area but close to the buzzer yeah Sell it out clean. You get a piece of the rock. You get like a little statue. But what was fascinating to me is that when I went through Evergreen and when I went through Boulder, I took Georgia to go look at Boulder. I went through Colorado State, took Georgia to Colorado State, right? Not one person that recognized me said, hey, man, what are you doing in Colorado? Everyone, everyone said, how was Red Rocks? And I went, that's marketing done right. Yeah. That You're is the You're an excellent key. marketer. I'm not an excellent marketer. I think I just got, I didn't mind, I, I got to a place where I didn't mind failing. So I was like, fuck it. I don't mind failing and figuring it out. But you make big announcement video. Like you do Dude, shit. Can you I can do I tap, shit can that I helps? Pat, my, pat myself on the back. Yeah. So we had a cruise, right? Uh, I put a cruise on announce and I had a bunch of big names for the announce that were attached that are all my friends. And they, at the last minute, uh, three of them backed out. They were like, hey, I can't do it. Big names that if you announce them, if you attach them to anything, it sells out immediately. And and I still have three big names, Whitney, Mark, and Miss Pat. But three other big names, and it's a no-brainer. Yeah. And I was bummed, but also I've said no to people on projects. So And all of them were fucking gangsters and texted me privately. Yeah. I, I reached out to Schultz, who's like one of my first offers. He texted me privately. I'm going to have to politely pass. I can't do it. I appreciate the offer. Yeah. But we sold out. The, but I shot a big promo. Got a crew, went down to the cruise ship, shot a promo, shot a sizzle, shot everything, um, sold it out in three days. Yeah. Sold it out day of, uh, like weekend of uh, of of general on sale, and it was it was unheard of for me. For they didn't, I don't think six man ever thought that was gonna happen for me. But that's when you start going like, yeah, you just gotta take, you just gotta keep swinging, you just gotta turn on the camera and just be willing to fail a bunch because a couple are gonna hit and then yeah. a couple are gonna be like. Oh, that was fucking good. No one remembers the bullshit video I did that no one fucking saw. Yeah. They remember the ones that you that were like, oh, that was good. Oh, yeah, you did that? I haven't seen that. All right, so sensitivity. So you've 
Have you tried, you made a concerted effort to not look at comments. What about within your life? Have you, like, so you say something to Tom, like, hey, this is what's happening. Yeah. Did you used to just sulk? Would you shut down for a long time? And what made you, how'd you stop? I would shut down, I'd let it build up, and then it and then it would just come out. Or, or, in a or, weird, or in like a week later in a different argument, or? We, we never really argue. Like to this day, we don't argue. We just, uh, if anything, we'll have like a We, me and you and me, Tom? Me and Tom, yeah, definitely. Yeah. If anything, we'll have a conversation where the, and this has only happened a few times, where the level of our voices is just a titch higher. Yeah. Like, bro? bro yeah like that it's never like dude what the fuck yeah it's like hey buddy and it's a a lot of times a lot of times it's me getting sensitive like a a big one i'll tell you a big one he had a guy on two bears that um i wasn't friends with i forget who it was um maybe it wasn't that i wasn't friends with him it was that i didn't know him maybe Mm -hmm. and i was like hey man you got to run these by me and he was like "I'm, i'm just trying to make a show man yeah and i was like no but i know but like I kind of want approval, and he was like, "He was like, okay, I didn't know that would bother you." And I was like, "Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I want to say it was Ari, only because I, I only because it, that's the safest place for me to fall is Aria sometimes, but um, it was someone that I felt didn't like me, and was shitting on me like too. But it far. wasn't Ari because you're friends with Ari. Yeah, but yeah, but no, but it, but, but it wasn't Ari because I had Ari on. I, or it was my guest. No, no, no. But it was somebody. You it don't was somebody. Say it was somebody. Yeah, yeah. But it was somebody. And it wasn't Spade, by the way, because Spade called me. He was like, "Hey, man, I feel bad. I shit all over you." <laughs> I was like, "I was like, no, that's I, that's a yeah, compliment." Yeah. But it was like, it was like weird. So like, and then I told him that, and then one day, Gail, go ahead and guess in the comments. Yeah, that'll be fun. But uh, and then one day I had someone on, and he was like, he was like, "Hey, I thought we were running in these by each other," and I was like, "Ah, oh, yeah, oh yeah, I don't." Yeah, I can see how you didn't do that to me. I I know why I didn't do it to you. And he was like, "Well, I'm just saying, like, you know, I know that guy. You know that we have history." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I, I can totally see how that would bother you." <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't do that at all. Yeah. And by the way, that was not who you think it is. It was just a weird booking. Is anyway that they you weren't just doing Elon Musk voice. Uh, That's who I thought it was. Yeah, uh, we should be. Uh, okay, so you've just realized that about yourself. Yeah. And as you've gotten older, you've just tried to get less and less, or you've sort of handled it in in house with yourself. Like you're not allowed. You're, that's this is beyond the realm of like feasibility in terms of a thing to get upset about. Or you've gotten better at expressing it. Uh, I have not gotten better at expressing it. I just know things that are like like we relaunched something's burning, which was very pri- personal and private to me. Is that it would be successful? But like I told everyone, I don't want to know the fucking numbers. Don't fucking judge it by the numbers. If you thought it was funny yeah. and you liked it, then we put it up and it's good and people will find it. Yeah. But don't fucking, and the Mark Norman, Bobby Lee one was the one we started with. And the first day everyone's like, uh, hey, big guy, 40,000 downloads. And I was like, guys, stop. Don't do yeah. that. Don't do that. Because it doesn't matter. Like some of the best podcasts I've ever done for Burcast, I have 27,000 views. And some of the ones that I I think are garbage have millions of views. Yeah. And you're like, that, that, that's not the thing. Yeah, it's not the thing that. So it's about like insulating yourself a little bit. Yeah, yeah that's l- yeah. but that's good. It's we're all too exposed. Yeah, as human beings, we're too exposed. Like I shouldn't know what a stranger thinks about me. You should not. And 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 I won't take the compliment serious if you pay. It I to agree. Me. The compliments just bounce right off. Yeah, you. and you're like, like, oh great, cool. I mean, there's a few compliments that I take that I go. Yeah, every once in a while yeah. you get a, a hot one. But uh, all right, let's look at. I've got death. It's inevitable. Yeah. Like, it's inevitable. It's hard to fathom, isn't it? It's hard to accept. And you're going to have to. One day you're going to have to. I think my mom it, said something to me one time that, like, freaked me out. And your she mom's said it to me, like, she, my mom's 88. Really? 89, as of, like, a week ago. She said this a while ago. She was like, I'm ready. And I was just like, the fuck? Yeah, but your mom believes in God. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I've, 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 I've even fucked around with. Like, do you not believe in God, or uh, you do, but until until the chips are, and then you're like, fuck, I don't. Re-, when you're we'll upset about out. death, well, we'll find out on that my deathbed if I'm at peace with it. I mean, I I think about it like I can't go to the, the like when I go to the doctor, I, f- I freak out thinking I'll get bad news. 
That's what most people are. The most people die is they don't go to the doctor because they're afraid of getting bad news. The bad news is inevitable. It's coming. Yeah, no, you, it's yeah. coming whether you whether you feel it or whether a guy says it to you. Yeah, and I, I wake up every morning. Not now. I've been healthier since sober October. I've, 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 my drinking has cut back drastically. Like I mean, I think I've drank maybe nine times since the beginning of October, which is a lot yeah. to not drink for me. But I think about it when I wake up. When I wake up, there was a period. I remember when it started, and I was like, "Oh, you're fucking up, man! Like you're fucking up. You're not being healthy. Like this is all." bad stuff for you and i think about it it's why i work out every day it's why i do you do it do you want to live because you're afraid of death or you want to live for like land and the kids it's and... it's fomo <laughs> it's fucking the fact that i just can't be it yeah you don't want wants... you don't want people to go on without you yeah i don't like, like... that's you know what's funny that's an unheralded issue yeah they're like no we're that's why i went like the rapture Great. We're all dying. I'm very cool with the rapture. Let's go. I heard a story about this little girl in Nagasaki, and it was on this history podcast I listened to. So they picked two places to drop bombs based on weather. They kept trying to bomb this one place, but based on weather, they picked Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So, be, but they missed the target. And in also, Nagasaki. there were a shitload of Japanese people there. That was the other reason. <laughs> yeah, Just yeah, let's yeah, be yeah, clear. yeah. So they they missed the target in Nagasaki by like seven miles. There was this little girl. It's not funny. There's this little girl well, who well, let's see who who the bomb hit, and she went to like the back of the room and then got thrown against the wall. Woke up, and the world was gone. Like the world was gone. And it was just her. And she didn't know. She was dying very soon. Like she said, they said she felt like knives and were going in her skin and eyes and her mouth. And it was all, there was all the nuclear fallout. But the world was gone. She woke up, got thrown, got the, knocked unconscious in the back of her school and got up and there was no landscape. Like it was just like, yeah. and I kind of felt envious of her that I was like, Oh shit! So I did it. <laughs> it's just me out here. Like I'm the last one, motherfucker. Would you want to be the last one? Yes. Fuck yes. It's a lot of FOMO, though. Oh no! Then I'd be like, all right, now I die with everyone else. Okay, everyone else dies. Oh, you just want to you you want everyone to die. You just want to go. Last. I want to go with everyone. That's my biggest fear. Is like I'm gonna die, and then everyone's gonna be like, oh my god, can I tell you how jealous I'm gonna be of my family that goes? They're all on my deathbed, right? And Everyone's there, and I'm taking my last breath, and then someone says, he's gone. It's really sad. She opened a bottle of whiskey, and someone goes, fuck, you. I'm going to cry. Pete, will you open that bottle of wine real quick? That I'm, I know that's what you mean. fucked up, because that moment, that's what life's about, is the fucking, I'm gone. My daughters, my wife, my friends, people are there. And then they go and celebrate my life, but I can't be there. That's yeah. so fucked up. They would go and have a drink, and they go, "How great was Dad?" And they didn't say that to my face, or I didn't get any of those compliments. <laughs> yeah, like it would be like I, I think about I think about I was having sex with Liam one time, and I and I looked in her eyes, and I thought, "I'm so glad that these are the eyes I'll see when I die," and not like some young fucking yoga trainer who goes a perfect ass. Yeah. Let's really get into it. Yeah. Part, like beautifully Full trimmed. head of blonde hair. Uh, no wrinkles on her face. Doesn't need a bra. Doesn't need a bra. Loose fitting shirt. No bra. Leaning over. And I'm laying we don't in the want, bed. This is who we don't want. This is what we don't want. We want Leanne. It's, you got the lollipop uh, with the sponge on it. So you, they, that's how they feed you water. You dip it in. and then Uh-huh. Right? And then she's looking at me and she's like, honey, I love you. She's got a redneck accent. Too. Yeah, they all do. She's like, I love you. I love you so much. And she, I watch her look at her watch, and I go, what are you doing? She goes, I'm just saying. I got yoga class in an hour, and I wondered, do you think I can go to that and then come back real quick? Because Leanne would never do that. Leanne's going to be my age, too. She's going to have fucking old lady eyes, and she's going to be like, give me some of that lollipop water. And then she's going to look at me, and she's like, don't go, birdie boy. And I'll go, I don't want to go, Leanne. She's like, I need you. My life's over when you're gone. You want someone to end their life when you end your life. Yeah. Yeah. You want the, you want everyone, like it's over. Yeah. 
I don't want it to go on without me. I don't. And I, it's funny because I, I have two thoughts about it, which is like, it's incredibly like narcissistic or arrogant. Yeah. But like, it's narcissistic. I'm a soft narcissist. Like, I'm, a, I don't affect your life, but I think about everything for me. Yeah. Yeah. That's about right. Yeah. And uh, I, I got, I just got popped with a covert narcissism charge last week from a, a COVID from narcissism? Covert. Oh. Alan and that's Covert? Rogan's Alan a Covert? COVID narcissist. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> covert like i'm subtly narcissistic but uh, whatever it's it's an interesting diagnosis and i think he's right there's i think narcissism runs pretty thick in our profession yes but it's 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 okay to be a little as long as it doesn't We're affect all other people here because of it just don't just hide it if you can i you got soft I mean? narcissism like i think about me first like i i i i never had a problem like just 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 come on come on pete. yeah let everyone pete, see what let you look pete, like have a seat pete yeah, see what, let's see what you look like, Pete. Because you're not going to get... Have a seat just so people can see what yeah. you're looking like. The problem is he Pretty dresses good. like a homeless guy. Not really. It's a good look. He owns this and all my merch from my shows. Yeah. Oh, this is... that's Those are his outfits? These are his... his this is Pete oh, dressed up God. night. Anything from Buffalo, man. Buffalo ruins people. Pete, thank you. Thank you, Pete. Of course. Um, okay, so the death thing, fascinating. Uh, and that's what I never had and any I think of that anxiety. Shared. I think I, that's a that's a quietly shared thing. Yeah. I um, mean, I wonder if I'm going to die before Leanne. I wonder if I'll die before Segura. I wonder who's going to die first. And what's crazy is, this is going to sound crazy, but like, I don't rejoice in people getting cancer. And there are people that it's crazy that rejoice in it. There are people that rejoice in it. They get excited to tell you bad news about someone else. In comics, it's it's super thick in comics. I've said this on the bus. I I, I say this out loud. Comics love cancel culture. They love. Oh, it. absolutely. They lo it's the yeah, greatest absolutely. thing that ever happened to comedy. Yeah, is when when you heard about say so and so so, so and so getting in trouble. The comics, uh, Chris Hardwick. Remember Chris Hardwick mm -hmm. did, did broke up with his chick or whatever happened yeah, to him. Yeah. And he broke up with her chick, and he just didn't do it cool. Yeah. And, and by the way, I, I know that woman's. I know that woman. I know that woman's dad. She's a very nice, sweet woman, and, and her dad's fucking a gangster. But um, I, my phone blew up that morning. I yeah. tell you, I was doing radio. And yeah, it was just people that lost on at midnight. Who yeah. were happy that Hardwick got people. That Even didn't if they book. didn't agree with the girl, they were still a little excited. Aziz, when people did that to Aziz, I remember reading it and going like, like it got blo it. Dude, fuck Aziz. Did you see this? Da, da, yeah, da, da. Yeah. It blew up within the comedy yeah. scene, especially in LA. Yep. It was all over the place. My text blew up and I read it and I remember going like, I gave it to Leanne. I was like, can you read this? I, I'm missing. I like I'm not good at reading. Like I'm just not good at, at comprehensive. Like I tap out. And Leanne read it and was like, Well shit, this ain't nothing but a bad day. And I was like, huh? She goes, Shit, I have Leanne spits inside, right? She spits <laughs> indoors. She spits in her hand and what's in her pocket? Yeah. <laughs> cynicism. Uh I fight myself with cynicism. Okay. So I don't know if it's my natural instinct. I I I am a cynic by nature as a comic. I think we all are naturally cynics, but I fight my cynicism because I don't want to be that guy. I'm trying to think of a great example of like a time where you go, oh, fuck that. Like, I'm too smart for the room. I know what's going on here. Hypothetically, I'm not saying any names, but say there's like an a, a internet star who's giving away cars to homeless people and giving homeless people $10,000 and, uh -huh. and going to homeless people and saying, here's pieces for a year. I know where you're going with and this. Then, and then I go, something's off. What did he do? And it's then everyone goes, my, he's a great guy. And I and go, hold like, on. He's not a great guy. There's something happening here. This is cynic this is, is cynicism, cynicism, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. This is cynicism. It's almost always right. Is the problem. I always say whenever someone's harping about morality, they're covering something up. There was this the second generation of Me Too that happened within our circle of uh -huh. friends. And and uh I watched some people come out against people so aggressively vocally yeah they were went, like what did you do wait a minute like yeah I, the guys that there was a bunch of guys who were like i'm a woman's right and you're like and then a month later there'd be a wave about them <laughs> being moral is like owning a restaurant there's yeah. like a three percent margin yeah 
of doing the right thing. And if someone's harping on, I literally used to argue with Dave about Bill Cosby. I knew it was an asshole in 1992. Yeah. And I'd be like, he's not a good guy. And he'd be like, man, I'm telling you. And I was like, I'm telling you, he's not a good guy. By the way, I, I never thought he was a good guy just from like I, the stories you heard about him. This is the, before I, I was a doorman at the comedy club. I just I, I heard read it. From, yeah. I heard stories from like comics that worked on his show. Yeah. The second Cosby show or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they'd be like, oh, he's a dick. Yeah. I was like, of course he is. I just, I just. If, I, you're, if you're hectoring people to be, it's, you wouldn't, it's a, it's your body or the soul has to do it because I, I i feel like i feel like i'm i'm wise enough priests to know. are the best example you know what i mean yeah like the, i know where you got it <laughs> i have i think i know where you got it it's i i am so hyper aware and i don't know if it's my dad raised me to like second guess myself but i'm so hyper aware to take a look inside before i say anything outside right. where i go which which isn't healthy i wish i uh, there was a guy that uh, had a post today and i and I, that I was looking on twitter and it was funny and i wanted to say something to kind of like snap him you know and then i was like ah, i don't do that man yeah like there's no reason to put your hat in the in a snap yeah, yeah just where you're like all what's of a sudden, your life like if you don't say this yeah it's exactly the same okay you ready yeah here we go this is perfect and i'm putting myself on the chopping block i get but it. i i what i want to say is you're i get that you don't want to feel this way Yes. But you've been proven wrong, or you've been proven right too many times. So Anthony Bourdain, yes, he was like my idol because I was over at Travel Channel when he was at Travel yeah. Channel, and and he was the god over there. And and you, all you wanted to do was get some FaceTime with Anthony Bourdain, which I never got. Maybe that registers on why I did this. He posted a picture of him in front of a private jet one time, and I was livid. I was fucking. That's not my guy. That's not. You're not my. Lost a fan. <laughs> you lost a fan. Did you write it? Yeah, I wrote it, wow. and uh. People immediately sent pictures of me standing in front of a private jet that I had been on. And I went, motherfucker. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Like, and, and then I, I took it down. I'm sure people screen grabbed it. But I was like, and then I was like, I, I want to reach out to Anthony Bourdain. I'm pretty sure that's why he killed himself. But like, the. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, no, that's the document. The last third of the documentary is just about your. Just about my post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, but like that, that part of my personality where you go like. Yeah, right. oh, that's gross. Yeah. Why did I do that? Because I love Anthony Bourdain, and it's really cool to be on a private jet. And if you're on one and you're not paying for it, you're definitely taking a fucking picture. You're like, this doesn't happen often. I'm with a great white shark. It's like meeting Chappelle. Yeah. I would. I've never asked for a comedian a picture with any comedian uh, ever. I'd probably ask for one with Chappelle. I probably. I'd probably be like, hey, can we get a picture? You know, the yeah, whole yeah, group. Yeah. But like, I would definitely. Here's a cute story like that. Me and Dave, and we were in Vegas, and Will Smith was there. This is five years ago, and yeah. Q-Tip. And we're all just hanging out talking. Uh, and uh, we talk for an hour, and then I'm like, we should get a picture. And literally everyone was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, literally, Will, Dave, Kamal, that's real yeah. name. Me, like, I just started it, but they all wanted. It doesn't, that doesn't go away. Oh, uh, yeah, that's. I'll be the one that will do that, and I'll throw my... A yeah. nice thing, they didn't... I said, let you guys get one without me, and they wouldn't do it. Good guys. I would do that. I would do that. You would get one without me? I would... No, I'd, no, I'd, I'd be like... I've seen I've seen them where they uh, Photoshop the person out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you they see an arm. That's so fun. It's a white arm. Uh, it really stands out. All right, <laughs> so hopefully people will watch it. Letterman brought you up. And I said, I'm going to tell you everything that happened on my end. I'll start okay. with my end because my end is a good prelude to your end. Okay. I'm getting ready to shoot my special. I'm super OCD about when I get, when I'm, when pressure's on, I start making bets with myself and rules with myself and just to, I don't know, it's a way to, I guess, cope with the stress. I don't, I'm not really sure. Yeah. I need to find a penny. Uh, I need to roll sixes and, and a lot of times I'll do little things in my head. So we're going out to lunch. Uh, Leanne doesn't have a coat that she likes. And she is complaining about her coat, so she's. I was like, "We'll get you a new coat," and and I'm and I'm feeling sick at the time. My throat's hurting, and I go, I go, man, I would love if this restaurant has chicken noodle soup. And uh, and I was like, "All right, if they have chicken noodle soup, I'll have great taping. If they don't have chicken noodle soup, then I won't have great taping." Was this the day of your taping? Yeah, it was the more the afternoon. This is my brain, and so the lady comes up right next to my head, and she goes, "What are you gonna have?" And I said what's the soup of the day and she whispered over here chicken noodle soup 
And I fucking started laughing hysterically. And everyone's like, what's so funny? I go, nothing, nothing, nothing. So now in my head, I go, that doesn't mean for sure, but that means we're in the right direction. So I go to get Leanna a coat and I put on a ridiculous coat. Uh, I ended up buying it. I put it on my Twitter. I put on a ridiculous quote. And I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. And as I put it on, I go, Leanne, what do you think? And I get a text from you. Check your messages. And so I go to check my messages. I hit play. And it's a message from David Letterman. Hey, Bert, I'm sitting here with Neil Brennan. It's Dave Letterman. Uh, I just want you to know that uh, I'm, I'm really happy. I'm really excited about two things. Number one, that uh, you think that you couldn't not perform with a shirt on. Uh, I think that's so interesting. And secondly, that you made dot, dot, dot amount of money last year. Um, congrats on all the success, Dave Letterman. I'm wearing this jacket. I'm getting ready to shoot my special that night. I'm with my wife, and I go, I'm buying this fucking jacket. This is the jacket I listened to that David Letterman. This is the greatest email. And so then I go there to that taping. Joanna's there. I tell Joanna, I'm fucking having a great day. How you doing today? I'm having a great day. All that energy moves you to have a great show so that energy that's so great that energy that voicemail couldn't have come at a better time in my life it's a little it's like a little all right so here's what led up to that there's a guy named bert kreischer yeah i know that's all i need to see he's gonna be so excited that you know who he is and and i he came to my attention a couple of years ago uh because he's not wearing a shirt Mm -hmm. and then i thought oh i must have come in halfway through the show and he auctioned his shirt (laughs) off or something but now uh subsequently he's always without a shirt and i've asked people who should know wh- wh- what's that all about he's like a part he likes he's the literally the life of the party he's like he lo- it's remember like spuds mckenzie <laughs> he's yes. like spuds mckenzie that's but, a huge uh, compliment do you great. want to leave a message for him oh. yeah oh this is fucking great Hi, Bert. Uh, it's Neil Brennan and uh, Dave Letterman, and we're talking about you and uh, the fact you don't wear a shirt. Uh, and I was delighted and pleased to know two things. One, that you think without the shirt or without without the shirt, people wouldn't like you. The best message and I've also, ever gotten in my life. And last year on the road, you and made Johnny $25 Depp called million. Me. So all my best and congratulations. That's fucking great. You know, <clears throat> that's an interesting... That's an interesting question is because, you know, when I did a few things that I I definitely I would get critiques from comics about, like the first thing was taking my shirt off. No one cared when I wasn't like no one gave a shit ever. They just thought it was funny at first. And then when Secret Time uh, did well, that was the first time that I heard someone say, so like, is that your thing? And I was like. And in my head, I was like, well, yeah. First of all, I did it organically in real life. Yeah. I did it organically when I did. That's why I did stand up. And then it, and then it was, I got identified by it. Well, the machine story went viral. And when the machine story went viral, everyone knew me as a shirtless guy. So I go to the show, I take my shirt off, and the crowd would go fucking nuts. And I was like, well, yeah, you, who doesn't want that immediate it's approval? Funny. Yeah. It's funny. But the funniest was I remember Segura called me one time and he was like, he was, he was giggling to himself. I said, what are you laughing at? This is the first thing he said to me. He goes, you're going to be 65 taking your shirt off. <laughs> I go, yeah, fuck yeah, I will. And he goes, you, do you have to do this for the rest of your life? I go, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Like, that's how that works. Like, why would you, like, also, I like it. Like, I like it. But, like, that's how, you know, I remember I did this thing called the Waitstaff Raffle where I would I would uh, bring, I would, I would pass buckets around. Everyone would chip in money. And then, uh we would bring that money on stage. I'd throw in some money too. And we'd raffle off like $1,500 to one person in the waitstaff. Yeah. staff. would pull a name out of the bucket. Someone get $1,500. They'd come on stage. They'd cry. They'd tell their story. And then they walked away with great money. And I remember comics got pissed that I did it. They're like, oh, real cool, dude. So now I look like an asshole when I go in there. And I was, right. like, I was like, wait, I just can't just come up with something and just do it. And they're like, well, unless I can do it, can I do it too? And I was like, wait, you just shit on it. Like if you want to shit on it, shit on it. But if, if you want to do it, then just say, hey, Bert, can I do that too? Same thing happened with the fucking drive-in movie tour, uh, theaters. When what I started happened? doing drive-in movie theaters. Yeah. I started doing drive-in movie theaters over the pandemic. Stay-at-home orders. We checked locally. You could have shows where everyone stayed socially distant. Open a drive-in movie theater. We got an uh, electronic dance promoter to set up drive-in shows. And people shit on me. Friends of mine. 
shit on me. I thought it was great. The minute I saw it, I was like, yep. Yeah. And then and great then idea. you get the cool guys, Jim Gaffigan, Brian Regan, the dudes that like legit, they were like, hey, man, that's a great idea. Is it cool yeah. if I do that? And you're like, fuck yeah, do it. Yeah, do it. That's I didn't come up with it to own it. Do yeah. it. Please do it. And so then everyone started doing drive-in movie theaters. And some people got shitty, really shitty about it, really shitty. And I was like. Well, okay, the reason I said to Letterman was because I'd heard you when you first, you were like, am I going to fucking have to, like, you were insecure about it. And this goes back to my insecurities is like what other people think of me was comics. As I go to the store and I have a problem doing it at the store. Right. Because comics would be like, are you taking your fucking shirt off? Yeah. And then you'd be like, I mean, yeah. And they'd be like, can you not? And I'd be like, okay. And then I do it because I'd want to, I, you know, it's like I don't want to fucking make things difficult for a comic following me or something. Right. I, I just, and then I was like, ah, maybe I'll just do it. And then you'd watch people just go like, oh, okay. And then I'd be like, I, they could tell I wasn't comfortable. I would sweat on in the shirt. Um, you it got to the point where you were uncomfortable having your I'm shirt. Un, on. I'm very uncomfortable with the shirt on. It, like when I do stand all up, the time, or I'm just... very uncomfortable. I'm very, I'm, I'm mostly shirtless most of my life. I have one one shirt I wear. This is James Purse. This is the only shirt I ever wear. It's the only shirt I ever go on stage on. It's the only shirt I mean, I that's wear. if James Purse has been looking for a marketing campaign. It, you're fucking right. The guy, I will <clears throat> These not are the wear. Greatest. The only shirt that I will wear is James, James Purse. Purse. Am I right, Peter? James Purse. It's the only shirt I wear on stage. It is the only shirt. I love this shirt. It's very comfortable. I have tactile issues. It's not tight around the neck. It's very loose on your body. I, it's very thin. You don't sweat in it. I love this fucking shirt. I love James Purse is a fucking gangster. He makes great goddamn t-shirts. But yeah, my my concern was like other comics being bothered by me taking my shirt off. I was always like, well, I don't, you know, I'm still kind of new at the store in in all honesty, and I want to make sure everyone's happy. And I don't, I don't, I don't give a fuck. I you just, ever hear that thing? Twenty five percent of people are gonna like you no matter what. 25% of people will uh, like you conditionally and 25% of people will dislike you conditionally and 25% of people will like dislike you no matter what. I always thought that last 25% who I could fuck. <laughs> you wanted to fuck the last, you the literally last fuck, have the last, sex with them. No, I thought I could have, I, I had a theory growing up that that last 25% you said was who wanted to have sex? I knew. First of all, I knew intuitively to ask the question because I knew you would have a theory about it. I had. I didn't think you would want to. Why? Because I. My thought is like the FOMO thing. Don't you? You want to convert them? Always. I would have been hanging from a cross in Sao Paulo, over a waterfall, going. You guys didn't listen to me. Don't throw me off the waterfall. You guys are natives. Let me explain the Lord to you. I fucking hardcore want to convert the ones that fucking I that probably builds into why I don't you know don't read into the fucking comments is that no no, no but it's yeah. the same you want to you want to like bend like come on you have why not like oh me? it's I, I remember hearing why like, not hear, like me like Shane or like uh, Mark Norman or like. New York comics would be like, yeah, people shit on Burt for taking his shirt off. And then I always want to text them privately and go, who? Like, tell me who. Because those, because they're, they're all my friends. I'm friends with all the comics right. in New York. Like, I, w I would know them, but I want to hear why and who. Like, because ultimately, ultimately, the old idea of a hook, right? Of like, ah, 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 ah. Or what is, is that what uh, Tim Dillon, or not Tim Dillon, God damn it. Cookie Monster? No. Ah, ah, ah. Still Cookie Monster. Ah, yep. Ah, ah. Is that the count? I like tools. Ah, ah. Oh, ah, Tim ah, Allen. Ah. Yeah. Tim Allen. Tim Dillon. Tim. <laughs> What's the opposite of Tim Dillon? Tim Allen. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Frogs are gay. Ah, 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 ah. But like the old school thing was have a hook. Like we used to make jokes about it. Tom and I would make catchphrases that we could say on stage that were mocking the idea of a catchphrase yeah but then in a weird way that fucking shirtless thing stuck and it was a good it was a good way to identify yourself yeah and and by the way when i talk about some of this uh, everyone knows the spanish-speaking special i saw this the guy with crazy sunglasses yeah. you ever seen him 
Yeah, I did his podcast. Oh, for real? Yeah, like I. That's why I'm like, I can't believe because I tried to watch it just after like ten. I was like, I can't do the I, I sh- subtitles. I, I do subtitles. It's a great way to find out how the writing is. Yeah. And so like I I I watched one of them with the peace sign sunglasses, and then all of a sudden I'm flipping through. I see another crazy pair of sunglasses, and I go, hey, I know that guy, and I clicked on it again. I didn't even think. I just I just went like Ali Wong being pregnant. It was a great. I mean, she's yeah. an amazing comic, but. It helps. I mean, it helps, like, yeah. here's another identifier. Yeah. And so I don't think I'm in a rush to put my shirt on. And I, I, I the only thing I'm, I'd love to get jacked, and then people go, please put a shirt on. That would be great, and I'd live forever. But, okay, so I, because I'd heard that, so I don't want you to think, like, I was telling Letterman, like, yeah, he's fucking. No. But you no. definitely had, you second, you had second thoughts, like, fuck, am I. The shirt. Is this cheating? Is this. Yeah. Did you buy into, like, it's hacky? I think if you're a comic and that's what you see and you don't see my stand up then uh then you're not as good a comic as i am that's how i feel well yeah i would like, agree like i remember i remember having a, a comic on our bus one time and that person said i i, I was a parlor trick and and uh it's really interesting i remember that distinctly it was right when i first started my uh right when i began body shots world tour she was like you're a parlor trick and i was like i am she's like yeah you were sure i to tell one story it was a it was a comic it's a female obviously and she I was think like we all know who it was <laughs> and i was sat there and i was curious and i said do you have any bits that stand out like do you have anything that anyone recognizes for you and she's like no but anyone can do what you do and i said you mean a 13 minute story like i'd like I, to see it's you do so it. insane to me when people say shit like that where it's so rude yeah it's like astounding astounding in my Someone own did that to me at a party one time like a woman did it to me at a party and it was i was so like taken aback by it i'm blown away by it she was so insulting to me and i and i i got it i was like no i get i get your vibe i get what you you think you do or, and i get what you think i do but i'm friends with your friends and they don't think that about me and i don't think that about me and and I was like, until you prove me wrong with your abilities, then I'm not going to really listen to what you're saying. And then that person reached out and asked if uh, she could tour with me. She was like, I'd love to open for you. And I was like, most definitely not. Like, I know what you think about me. Yeah. You were drunk and you said what you thought, thought about me. Yeah. It's like, you got, by the way, you could say the same shit about, there's a lot of comics you could write off. You could literally write everyone off. Yeah. You could write, like, literally there's not a comedian in the world. And I've heard them people insult themselves i've heard people get insult like yeah it's like look we we're not gonna we're not gonna all be Chappelle, but I, he, i've heard him discount it you know what i mean like yeah i've heard people discount Chappelle. yeah and, and then, I've heard, and then I've, i just I, look at them and go you don't know what you're fucking talking about chris rock one time was staying in a nice house and i was like it, i was there with some friends and he's like i was like this is a nice place and he's like he goes all you got to do is uh have a good observation and just keep repeating it. It's like, a, yeah, a get, yeah. If you want to shit on yourself, but yeah. that's not what you're. I mean, it's, it's like not what a, Chris, yeah, look. That, that's the whole thing. Is like Chris Rock is is I'm, I'm fucking genius. no, no, of course, yeah. right. That's what I'm and, saying. And, like, but, but we but, can but all you be can dis- you can all whittle it down to something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like we yes. Exactly. I watch people do it to Rogan. They go, oh, so he just denies covid and then you're like mm, that's not where he got where he is like yeah, like i go if you're not listening to his podcast i'm like no i heard the one where he said that you shouldn't take the vax i go then you're not listening to anything you don't know what the fuck you're talking about like you're whittling him down to the thing you want him to be so it makes you feel better about yourself you haven't listened to the hours upon hours of hours of podcasts where boss rootin talked about his buddy who bet he could put a cue ball in his mouth and they had to chip his teeth to get it out one of the fucking hardest i've ever laughed in my life <laughs> eddie bravo the, the fucking things rogan has done on his podcast are maybe my favorite times I've ever had in a hotel room bed, in a fucking airplane, in a fucking, on a treadmill, is listening to that genius fucking podcast. You can whittle everything down. They've done it to you. Of oh, course. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like they, you do guy. it to everyone. And I think it's just, I think it's just, uh, I think everyone shows up to the right towards the end of life when they're about to die and they're like, I guess Neil Bennon did create the Chappelle show. <laughs> like, yeah, eventually we all we can be reduced but but i would say i think it's i think it's actually a benefit when you can be reduced of course it's, it's I, the easiest it's, way for other people to no, sell you this yes other it's like they have to like, look, put a ho- synopsis of the movie yeah, hawaii 
Right. Yeah, look, you can, look, you can sell. Look, there's a lot of great islands. Bali. Yeah. Uh, fucking. Uh, 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 fucking Fiji. Long, long. Fiji. All of the Cook Islands, all the hamburger islands, all those Long islands. Island. Long Give Island. Give me the joke. There's, there's, uh, but when you sell Hawaii, it's so easy to sizzle it down. Hawaii is fucking awesome. Yeah. Have you been to Maui? Have yeah. you been to Honolulu? They, they cook their pork in leaves. It, the, 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 the aloha uh, sensibility is hello, but le- it, it, you can sizzle it down. It's just so easy to sell. Yeah. If, if you, if I leave this earth and they go, Burt Kreischer was the Hawaii of comedy jack off on my face fuck yes i maybe that's not what my happy place but when do you want me to jack off on your face on my deathbed (laughs) is i just want you to go in a cape my wife's over there she's like you ain't dying birdie boy is you (laughs) my daughters are drinking whiskey daddy i love you playing banjo and then you come in in a cape flip the cape open and, and i go ladies go, i'll take guys, it from here <laughs> <laughs> and you play david letterman's voicemail to me uh what an end <laughs> uh, what i want we i may close with that but if i don't close with that <laughs> i w- w- the thing that's great about you're a life force that's the thing and the thing i said to letterman i go you're spuds mckenzie but you can write jokes and you're fucking funny and that's that. that's what i was saying it's like you're a life force you can't fake write it it's like you can't fake it can't fake it. i mean you yeah. can't fake writing yeah. so it's like you can't fake charisma you can't you have so many skills well, thank and you. thank you and, i don't feel like i have any of them sometimes when i show up at the store yeah but the, none of us do yeah i guess i mean i think there are guys that definitely show up with awesome right but you don't go box. you go i might i i think i have i might have something here i but, go I, I go i can cheat it with personality tonight I think that a lot. I go tonight. I'll cheat it with personality and see if I can find one joke. And then sometimes you get a joke where you're like, I, I, you wake up, you, you wake up the next morning, you go, did, did did someone else write that? Like, how did I get that? That was so good. And then you text everyone, Hey man, has anyone ever heard about the two cows fucking in the field thing? And everyone's like, Nah, that's you, that's you. And you're like, Shit, that's oh, going in the shit. special. Yeah, I'm like, glad I showed up at the store last night. If you were gonna tell people all the sort of blocks for like, but it. What's the best thing you piece of advice you've gotten in terms of like changing yourself or overcoming a quote unquote block? Shout out to Barry Katz. You know, a lot of people said this to me. Barry was the first person ever said it to me. And it, and I thought of this today, oddly enough. I think of it a lot. Uh, I bombed at an ICM showcase in like 99 or 2000. And I was panicked that it, I had ruined my name in the industry because I didn't do well. And I had always done well at every showcase. And you're I probably was, 28 and you feel ancient. Yeah. I feel like I'm, I've, I just missed my time. Yeah. And Barry said to me, Papa, I think you're overestimating how much people are th- thinking about you. And I said, what? And he goes, let me ask you a question. Who have you been thinking about today? And I said, me obviously barry i'm calling about me and he goes that's who they're thinking about themselves too he goes you need to relax and realize not one person is texting about your bomb they're talking about the people who succeeded so enjoy the rest of your day no one's talking about you and i think that is the one thing i think is that like when you can get worked up in 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 your head about anything anything uh uh, and, and a negative comment you might see, or 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 someone passing on your your pitch, or, or yep. anything, uh, even a bo- bad podcast where you go on the podcast, you're like that didn't come out right. No one that doesn't register with people, they just go eh, whatever. They just ignore it. Yeah, they ignore it and they go, I don't think about that now. It just sucked, and then they just keep moving. And I think this pays both ways. But the things that register with people and they get angry. Or the things that register people and they love, you gotta. Those are the things that are important. I, th- I think I gave such a fuck about like assuming what people thought when I was younger, and I probably up until not even joking, eighteen months ago, like until I got on tour for this show. I think the pandemic wasn't healthy for my brain. But that's the biggest takeaway is like you are thinking about yourself. Everyone else is thinking about themselves. No one's thinking about you. Yeah. No one. It's 
what makes but trolls Bert. so potent is that they go, I can't believe he's taught, he's replied. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> They're like, he fucking, I thought that guy was a movie star in the Hollywood Hills who was getting his dick sucked by models driving Lamborghinis. He fucking wrote back? But the you know what's <laughs> potent about trolls also is they are thinking about you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they are. And Bert, I also want to say that there's still that 25%. Which 25 the fucking you far can, end? you can fuck. I can convert them. <laughs> Leanne was in that 25%, people. Did you convert her? Oh, hardcore. I showed up, fucking ripped my shirt off. I, we were at a bowling alley. Uh, loud as fuck. She was like, who is that guy? Someone's like, oh, he's a comedian. She's like, oh. And then I didn't really talk to her. We kind of like, I, I flirted with her a little bit, but I was also all over the map. And then she was like, uh, hey. At the end of the night, this is my number. Call me, and I was like, um, "Okay." And I was like, "You're you're a whore. I'm not calling whores. No, that's how my never. brain works." And then, uh, and then I'm not even gonna hook up with you. I don't kiss whores. Yeah, <laughs> I'm such a prude. And then she, uh, and then she called my roommate. And was like, "How come your roommate ain't no calling me or whatever?" And <laughs> who done what? <laughs> who? Wait, do you being serious? That's you know, uh, do what now? That's what they, oh, she really so do what funny. now? And so, uh, and so I got on the phone with her and she's like, you know, if you take me on a date, I'll go. And I was like, okay, but I'm just not there for sex. And she's like, what? And then we went on a date and I was, I told her, I was like, I, but she, she didn't like me at first. I was just loud. And I, I made a joke that her friend, it caught her friend. It was a, it was a stand-up joke, like a joke joke. And I, we we're bowling. And so I turned around and I go, I said, hey, does anyone's fingers taste weird? And her friend like tasted her finger goes, oh Yeah. Like almonds, like salty. We all been fingering bowling balls all night. <laughs> and her friend got upset, and Leanne defended her friend. <laughs> did you did, did you do the finger thing as a bit? Oh, yeah, I used to do it uh, as a bit. You know, it's fun to do yeah, when you're bowling. Yeah. After your ninth frame, turn around and go, "Do your fingers taste weird?" And so I did it as a, like a joke. And her friend goes, "Yeah, like really salty, like almonds, right?" And I went, "Right." And so uh, Leanne got she defended her friend, and then next thing you know. We're married for 18 years. You love her. I Can love you believe? Her. Can I love her more than this? anyone's ever loved her in her life. Isn't that bizarre? By far. Uh, By far. By far. Did she? Is she from a bad past? Uh, no, but trust me. Like, I'm, uh, like. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. All right. If you said it, you know how much her dad loved her. <laughs> Uncle Clayton loved her. Uh, <laughs> that's this has a been funny, a great. This has been a great fucking podcast. What were we gonna say? Say it. No, no, it's a funny thing that that's a guy. Like that is a guy thing to be like. No one's ever loved you like this. I fucking trust me. There's no one. Is this all shit you talk about? Have you talked about this stuff on the on on two bears? No, I don't. I don't maybe I don't know. All right, great. I don't even know. I don't even know what I say sometimes. I just say it because I feel like I Here's know you in a you, slightly when, different way, and people say shit to me that they don't say to other people no i i don't say certain stuff with tom uh i think i think that we we try to go veer towards uh i, I don't fucking know here's the problem with me i'm unaware of what i say when i say it and i just say it because do you remember when uh this is a fucking such a stupid pivot i don't know why i'm doing it do you remember when everyone was like seeing pictures of people in blackface uh -oh. and i go and i go uh i can tell you there's never gonna find a picture of me in blackface because i don't like clowns so i don't like makeup on my face mm -hmm. it's like i've never liked that it gives me ocd it fucks in my mouth like yeah, yeah. i kind of i've been doing this the whole yep. night and then also trying to be doug williams you know so like so like i don't like i've had makeup on my face but i can only do like eye paint or right. like uh dead presidents you know like a yeah, loop yeah. around your eye yep and then everyone's like, how can you say that? And I go, I just, I just know myself. So the thing about like Leanne is like, I just. She loves blackface. <laughs> That's the thing about her. It's, it's only way from the South. South so yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. you do it. I do it only so she can come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's her shoulders. It's like, your shoulders look huge. <laughs> you blackface. And then you throw a little blackface on and she fucking blast. She squirts all over your face. No, she doesn't squirt. Okay. Um, look, <laughs> Bart, it was a great podcast. You're a great Bro, I guy. love you, man. Yeah. Congrats fucking, on your special. Thank you. It's fucking phenomenal. You're it great. really is phenomenal. Thank you.
Thank you very much. You're a great Thank dude. Thank you for I'm doing Two you. Bears with us. You I'm were happy. amazing. Yeah, no, it was great. Um, Who very... would you do Something's Burning with? Uh, I would love to have you on Something's Burning. Yeah, let me Your think. energy is so, our energy is really, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm saying this, but like, I love our energy together. It's like Moshe Kasher. I love Moshe Kasher. Yeah. I love his energy. It's it's a fun. Yeah. It's a, I, like, I love that. So anyone you ever want to do, think about it. Something's Burning with. Uh, Bert Kreischer, the Hawaii of comedy. Yep, there we go. He made us wait for him. We had to earn it. It's for you, you David knew it Letterman. Was coming. I love you, David Letterman. Mm -hmm.